Combat Federation is truly the world's number one global mixed martial arts. Stage is set, the bright lights are on, and this is Brave Combat Federation. Are you watching closely? What captures your eyes? What elevates your mind? Can you feel it? The spirit of roaring warriors echoes through the arena. This sport is not easy. It's very difficult. The takedowns. The submissions. The knockouts. Gods and inner demons dance together. All for greatness. A sport that is the ultimate pursuit of mental and physical prowess. It is the tears in victories and the pain in losses that lead us to the edge of our emotions. A heroic transcendence. The grasp of this immersive experience exceeds all nerves. A captivating story that resembles a vision to celebrate the true spirit of sport in its full glory. A heart that is of fighters, coaches, spectators, organizers, sponsors, partners. A sport that is the embodiment of your true self. This is Brave Combat Federation, and you are watching Brave CF TV. Friday, October 28th, Brave CF returns for an epic night of fights as the fastest growing promotion in MMA closes out the latest Combat Kingdom series in epic style. At Brave CF 65, the pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kaheji gets back to action as he takes on Colombian MMA icon Eduardo Mora in the main event. Also set for fight night is the much anticipated return of Jose Shorty Torres as the number five flyweight in the world goes up in weight to welcome Arab superstar Izzedin Alderbani. Tune in to witness the best athletes from around the world in epic battles and electrifying action. Brave CF65, live from the Khalifa Sports City Arena in the Kingdom of Bahrain. My name is Hamza Al-Kuhaji, I'm 23 years old. I was born and raised in Bahrain. I started looking for uh, something that I love to do. And uh, since I'm 19 years old, I started going to an MMA gym. And I found out that I like to fight. I enjoy fighting from long time. So I wanted to take fighting as my career. When I, start, when I started fighting, there was, everyone in Bahrain was not supporting the idea of fighting because there was no professional fighter before that. So I, did, I really didn't have any supporters, only my ex-coach, uh, Muhammad Shahad. And then when I started fighting, a lot of fighters started coming into the gym. And my friends started supporting me, my family started supporting me. So uh, now everyone is supporting my professional career and really helping me to do what I'm doing. Before uh, getting the support from Sheikh Khalid, the training was really hard, it was tough. 
we really didn't have coaches when we get injured we used to stop a lot we couldn't make living out of from fighting so being a, only a fighter was really hard in Bahrain and I risked everything I stopped my education everything I sacrificed everything in my life just to become a fighter so after my second professional fight when Sheikh Khalid called me and offered to sponsor me and to help me and open the team it's really helped me and now that I'm having new coaches and all the science, everything developed, I'm getting like much better fighter than who I was before. Fighting uh, for Bahrain and Bahrain is very nice thing. Like the best moment in my life is when I won my second fight in Bahrain. It's better than all the other fights. It's because between your hometown and your friends, your family, everyone is there, everyone is supporting you 100%. And fighting for an organization that really big and it's happening in Bahrain that would re be a really nice thing that I can do again. My name is Hamza Kohaji and I am Rev. Friday, October 28th, Brave CF returns for an epic night of fights as the fastest growing promotion in MMA closes out the latest Combat Kingdom series in epic style. At Brave CF 65, the pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kaheji gets back to action as he takes on Colombian MMA icon Eduardo Mora in the main event. Also set for fight night is the much anticipated return of Jose Shorty Torres as the number five flyweight in the world goes up in weight to welcome Arab superstar Izzedine al -Durbani. Tune in to win best athletes from around the world in epic battles and electrifying action. Brave CF65, live from the Khalifa Sports City Arena in the Kingdom of Bahrain. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what a fight this will be. Let's welcome our first warrior to the cage from Mumbai, India. Please welcome Mohammed Farhan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the battle. cage from Manima Bahrain, the fighting pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kohaji.
Pride of Bahrain, Hassan Koheji. And we're going to have a split audience here. Yeah, we do. Right? We really do. A lot of Indians here in Bahrain. Yeah, that's true. I didn't expect that. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Two years younger is Koheji, but the height and the reach goes to Farhad, Bahrain, India. Let's go to Carlos Grima. Ladies and gentlemen, your next bout is three, five in rounds in the Bantamweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and two losses. He stands 175.26 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 61 kilograms. Fighting out of Mumbai, India, representing Team Relentless. Give it up for Mohammed Farhan! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and one loss. He stands 170.18 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.7 kilograms. Fighting out of Malama Bahrain and representing KHK MMA. Put your hands together for the fighting pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kouhiji. Your referee is Axel B. Whoa. If that doesn't get you excited, that the, the homie tough. Carlos Kramer <laughs> giving the fans what they need. He's got some pipes on him. Yes, he does. Listen, listen to this crowd, guys. This is going to be a fun one. Hobbs and Gohedji in the black with the red trim. And the orange and the black and the gray is Muhammad Farhad. He doesn't seem like he's based. Uh, very, very stoic look. Look at Farhad and, and look out for his left hook and those looping right hands. Um, and he's really good at those high kicks as well, so he's a striker fighter. Farhad keeping his hands low, but sometimes those punches are hard to, to see where they're coming from. from different angles. Good kick, good kick. He's, uh, Hamzako Heji also went to train in the States, uh, did some time out there with uh, Dwayne Ludwig. Uh, you can tell that little bit of footwork there, kind of sneaky uh, left kick. That bang Muay Thai. As you can see, winding up that right hand is Muhammad Farhad. Like I said, man, it just doesn't seem like he's phased at all by the oh, crowd. The right hand. Watch There's out. that hook. Hamza's gonna try to, he's trying a little bit of a recovery here. Probably gonna try to attempt that takedown, the Pakistani single. He's gotta set it up, get inside. Might have hurt his pride a little bit there. Made another uh, slapping uh, high kick from Farhad, but Farhad is standing his ground, doing really good. You can only imagine how closely Sheikh Khaled and Shahid are watching this fight, but this is their guy, man. You my, know. my heart's racing right now. Yeah, and yours as well. He's a little bit slow on that uh, overhand right, you know, just trying to set that up. He's, he's really telegraphing it. Yeah, he's throwing some feints in there, he's just not throwing off the feints. That's right. There you go, he's trying to get behind that jab a little bit. Farhad doing a good job of every time uh, Hamza comes initiating, kind of takes a little pop step back. Nice right hand. Range. Farhad stepping in there, landing the right hand. Oh, nice right kick. And I'll say this, though, as much as Brave is rooted in Bahrain, they have a great relationship with India as well. I mean, I'd say right underneath Bahrain is India. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, Muhammad uh, Shahid. Oh, here hands locked. Hands locked. Over to bring him over to the corner. A little Matt Hughes in him. Oh, I'll tell you, Farhad got his leg down a little bit, otherwise that would yeah, be a little exactly. bit bigger slam. I got to roll with Hamza. Uh, about, about five months ago, and, and, and he, was a, he was pretty good on the ground. He was a huge improvement from maybe two years ago. Well, you just think about the sessions that he's had with Eldar Eldarov and going up into Russia and Dagestan, man. And if you take anything away from that, you're going to be a monster. There's that body There's that. lock. He's got to work up, though, here. There you go. Now he's working up. Farhad trying to push off, get his hips free. Hamza doing a good job of keeping that pressure on him. Got the 
body lock here. Hamza Goheji holding on to everything that he has, like a vice grip on Farhad, up against the fence right in front of us. It's really good, really good tactic here, trying to hold down the pressure, kind of avoiding the striking ability of Farhad right now, getting getting back into the rhythm, kind of resetting the, the, the momentum. He's trying to get that double, has his hands locked. And he's trying to pull Farhad away from the cage. Farhad doing a good job with the cross facing the wizard. Uh, trying and to grab that fence. Everybody gets one. <laughs> Veteran move, man. Just, just give a little grab. And I'd like to see Hamza put his face right down in the middle of his body to be able to kind of uh, take that face away from Here Farhad. Here we go. What I like to do is use the defense has a little give. You got to use a little bounce. Use that bounce and time it, time it out and try to drag him off that fence there. Nice move, getting the double underhook. Mohamed Farhad, and he is out of trouble. Wow. It has to be frustrating. That is. Hedgy. Oh, absolutely. It wasn't going to be easy, and he knew that. Still, though, you know, when you have those grappling exchanges, those clinch exchanges, it, it slows guys down. Guys that are comfortable striking, they don't like clinching so much. Still a lot of bounce to his step, but great movement here from Farhad, though. Might have taken off a little bit of juice. You're right, Frankie, off yeah. of Farhad. Not as relaxed as he was with his hands down. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> you get that right hand. Shaking him again. off. I think Hamilton needs a ton of push here. He's got a sense that he's, uh, you know, slowing him down a bit. Try to get more grappling exchanges. Setting it up. Unable to connect. Throws three, lands zero. Going right down the middle is Farhad. And it's probably going to be that takedown and the damage from Kolhegi. He's got to stop him this round. He's got to stop moving straight back. Get some more angles on those punches. Good round, building each other out. Obviously, yeah. that slam was something special from Kohegi. He didn't quite get all of it. Uh, right. That being said, nice recovery from Barhat as well. Pretty even round, but I think Kohegi probably gets it. Yeah, I damage. think the slam, you know, the control is the most significant thing that happened in that round. I'd give it to Hamza. Yeah. Take a look at the replay. Hamza stepping through and missing that time. Great elusiveness by Farhad and great. Frankie, what would you be telling uh, Farhad's corner at this moment? I would say, let's come on, keep him at the end of your punches. Use your length, move your feet. When he was moving his feet, he's doing well. And stay away from the fence. We call it like, uh, we say fire. You hear fire, it means get your back to the center. Gotcha, awesome. In the corner right there, Gage, Gage, MMA, Hamza, Mohenji, Eldar, Eldar off a fantastic fighter in his own right. Yes. This team is, you know, started from the bottom and they continue to get better. They put some amazing names under the banner. Guys like Frank Yeager and Shorty Torres. And, right. You know, get the guy that started it all, Hamza Kohegi, man. Uh, he's got a huge test right in front of him. Farhad is still right in front of him. No doubt about it. It's a big round two here, guys. Who's going to set the tone? Is Koheji going to be able to fight through those punches once again? Round two begins. Farhad's going to have to be more aggressive, but at the same time, some lateral movement. Ooh, that's very that's dangerous. A low, no? Yeah. Farhad's that's what happens a lot when you have a southpaw versus a righty. The inside kick kind of ends up there. Look Going down, went high. Hamza's got to be careful with that inside leg kick, man. He's doing that without throwing any, any hands first. Uh, and uh, Farhad's got that looping overhand. Looks like Koheji has a shot in his mind here. Let's check by Hamza, yeah. Hey. He was rocking with that left. Kind of knocked him off balance. I don't know if he really rocked him there, but it was pretty significant. Yeah, Farhad steps Look right back the in judges. there. It was a significant <laughs> strike, yeah. for sure, guys. Where folks who are watching Brave Combat Federation 9 in over 80 countries by millions of folks. Big thanks to our partners in Vietnam, My TV. And in the Philippines, ABS Sports and uh, Action yes. Star Sports TV. Great, Great timing on that right hand. Well done, guys. Well done. <laughs> jinx, jinx. <laughs> jinx. <laughs> that's, a, that's a typical Frankie move right there. Boom. Excellent timing on that takedown. Just didn't drive through a finish. Uh, a finish, and I got to give Farhad good credit. He was able to get his hips back. So 
a lot of time left here in round number two. Well, Hedgy seems to have some, some bit of control here. Hamza's got to be careful putting his head down before he throws his punches. A lot of pressure on the back of Hamza for Hedgy. Man, the fans are losing their minds. Oh, nice right yeah. hand. Left hand. Straight left from the southpaw. And uh, good. I like to see this. He's keeping that head up high, the hand up high, his left hand. Farhad stepping through. So I don't get why tall guys hunch over sometimes. You know, it's kind of like they're taking their length away. I don't understand that sometimes. I think it's just his awkward movement, yeah. Frankie. That's true. No. I think, too, his, his feet aren't moving as well, so he's staying a little hunched over. Oh, uh, yeah. Hams is stepping in there, landing a big left hand. Farhad, though. Great strikes, nice sprawl. Can he get away? Oh, staying with it, staying with it. From the tenacious Hamza right Koheji. This is what he drills every day. Like a dog on a bone. Got to work up here, got to work up. Oh, and he's got the back. He's going to try to drag him back down. How strong is the fighting pride of Bahrain? He's got to secure something, try to get uh, Farhad to his back. And really complete the takedown and then build some damage on top. Maybe throw a hook in here. Yeah, he needs to do some damage here if he's going to do all this work. Oh, Exactly, all that work for nothing. Fence grab, we'll see a little fence grab. Hey, oh, hey everybody gets one, not four. Yeah. Barhat is in defensive mode right now as Koheji is all over him. With 90 seconds left here in round number two, grinding as he does. Ah, another fence grab, man. Come on, this got to take control here. Good punches, good punches for him. Hamza. Is he going to do it again? It looked like he almost grabbed hold of that fence again. But you don't want to stop the. You, you don't want to yeah. stop it. Time, time, all right. See, I, I just, I, you know what? You got to stop it to get the point. But right. I mean, Hamza had so much momentum there. Yeah. I hope they start the fight back there, back where it was. Is that a warning? Is he going to take a point? It's got to be a point, man. Yeah, yeah at this point. Them already. I mean, there's already. been at least what. Probably five, five, yeah, five six yeah. bench reps. Oh, I was going to let him go without the point. No, I don't know. I think he's looking over to his, to the head ref. The fighter should be separated right now. Oh, right. Getting back to the action. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that, that's going to be a warning, man. There's going to be no point to duck ah. it. So he basically gives him a break, too. Yeah, that, that's just, that's not right. He won him three times. Yeah. He's doing it again. Look at he's gonna go right to it again. Not gonna stop Kohenji from grinding. Going knees into the thigh of Farhad, steadily picking him apart here at Brave Knight. Again. <laughs> oh, he's, doing oh, he's holding again. on to that. Again. Where's the point? I mean, that's just malicious. Negligence. Negligence, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know Mark Goddard is losing his mind over there, our head imagine. official. Here we go, he's doing it again. He can't handle the strength of Hamza the hook in. There we go. Yeah, don't want to do that, end up on the bottom. Well, yeah. you, know, you, you know how you solve all this, you just finish your guy off. And it looks there like that's what Hamza is trying to do. Hamza's got oh, 30 seconds. Got chin. got on the chin. He's just squeezing the neck, going for a neck crank. How much does Farhad have left? I don't think he has him completely under the no. chin. He's got to take his opposite hand. Got to switch. That one tight. Yes. Yep. He's trying to just pop his hand oh, right he's off. He's deep. He's in deep. Final second. Is he going to be able to do it? I don't think he's going to do it, guys. He's tight. He's tight. Uh, he's under the tight. neck. He's able to grab that top uh, hand. Marhat survives. Hi, uh, Karamba. Alza wow. really coming on in that round. You know, able to dictate what he wanted to do. Get to the get. Get uh, Farhad to the ground. Once you got those hooks in, man, you almost see the finish. Yeah, you almost had it. You almost had it. Yeah, literally just seconds away after he got underneath that win. I'm to go ahead and the confidence is running high right now. The yeah. momentum is good. I'll be very surprised if this gets out of the third round. I mean, the only thing I gotta say is, with, with Farhad, he wasn't really, uh, he wasn't really worked, overworked. I feel he was just held. Um, but Hamza put in a lot of a lot of effort to do to get into those positions. So. We'll see how much effect that takes on, on both of these fighters. Is a good Take right him the replay, yeah, beautiful. A very entertaining round.
as Hamza Koheji is dominant. Unable to get the finish, but he may be on his way. We'll see if Farhad can fight back. Wow. Third and final round, guys. Farhad, does he have enough to pull something off right now? I think Koheji at the same point has been going hard, grueling pace, trying to take out his opponent. So how much does he have left? We'll find out who wants it more in the third round. Well, his spirit is, his spirits are high for Hamza. He's feeling the momentum. He's feeling more comfortable in there exchanging with him. He is. He's got to make sure he doesn't run into anything. Yeah, especially throwing that low left kick like that. He should be looking to just put him against the fence, drag him to the back, drag him to the mat, and put him away. Oh, and a huge head kick to the side of the head of Muhammad Farhad. I'm starting to see a little bit of panic in the eyes of Farhad. What an atmosphere it's been for International Combat Week in Bahrain. The IMAF Worlds, and now Brave Nine. Daggy Staggy Got to move his feet, got to move his feet there to finish take down. Inside, inside leg trip. Push him to the fence. See if he can switch to a double here. Taking huge is. elbows. Down goes Farhad. Right into right mount. mount. Good job, Hamza. Nice. Gonna keep his head to the center. Try not to let uh, Easy uh, team, Hamza. Uh, <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I'm trying to stay neutral out here, but man. It's tough when you got a horse in the race. It is. Know? It is tough. It is super tough. Got the hook in. One hook in for Koheji. Ah, kind of lets that hook go. A knee to the knee. Those never feel good no, as Hamza no. Koheji continues. Fahad is defending on those hands really good. It's just he just needs to kind of explode and put that right hand over his shoulder, get that wizard back, and start working from there. You know, Hamza, when he has uh, when he has uh, Farhad's back, he's kind of going palm to palm with gable grip. I like to see him go ten finger grip, kind of harder to break. Yeah, he's got both those hands underneath, trying to get that body lock. But Hamza's just constant pressure on the base of Farhad. Oh, he's trying to go anaconda there. Oh, looks pretty good. Kind of has it. it. He has it. He has it. Oh no, that could be trouble. Or call Hedgy. Uh, it was a tough one to finish, but yeah, I don't know if he has it too deep. Now it now it's starting to get dirty. Oh, watch oh, wow. out, folks! Wow, that is deep. That is uh, deep. Nope, nope, nope. He's got the guillotine. Switching it to guillotine. He's got to get his butt in the air if he wants to defend this. He is yanking back on the neck of Kohedji. Can he survive? I think Hamza. That forearm on the carotid artery. Farhad just doesn't have it. Nope. Wow, great survival. So look, that was pretty, uh, pretty slick of him to go for that, though. Using that length to get yeah. to that anaconda, then to that guillotine. Now you're on the bottom with the pride of Bahrain, raining down shots. Big elbow from Hamza on top. I think he strings something nice here. He can maybe get the finish. Fahad needs to lead. open up that guard and start working and get up because this is not where he wants to be right now. Easier said than done. So. <laughs> well, he's got his legs locked in, so it looks like he wants to stay there, but right. he's not attacking. So he needs to open his, throw that guard up and start working his way up against the fence, doing some, some, some cage walks. Yeah, I mean, he's down pretty big on the scorecards now. He's got he's to make something happen. He's got to feel desperate. Looks like he's trying to creep those legs up. He's trying to creep that leg up the back. Easier said than done. On the very stout, the wide shoulders of Hamza Koheji. He must be, uh, Farhad must be tired or something, but oh, there you go, he might be, looks like he's attacking for a triangle. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Big shot from Hamza. Koheji doesn't want to make, make a mistake right now with under a minute left, here comes the strikes. Just posture up, raining down. Farhad's not doing anything to control his posture. He's going to not stop Hamza from throwing his punches here. You know, when you're on bottom in MMA, when punches are coming, you either want to be really in or really out, not uh -oh. in between. Uh-oh, uh -oh. An armbar attempt. 
Wow, he's not out of it. He is not. Yeah, he is gripping it really tight. If he can break that hold. Hamza oh, Hamza, Hamza did a good job putting he, his head in there. Hamza better jump over those feet. Farhad doing a great job of attacking. Final moments. Time ticking out. Time he better here. pull it out. Oh, it's tight. It's tight. Koheji survives. Koheji yeah, does it. Good job. Wow. Hamza Koheji getting it done. You gotta give Farhar credit, you know, staying there to the end, almost looking for that submission, you know. That's what he had to do. No, you, yeah, I definitely love that. Almost had it. What a performance there by Hamza Koheji. Mohamed Farhad did his best to hang in there, but it was just most likely not going to be enough as we go to the scorecard. We'll see. We'll see what the judges see. <laughs> we don't know. Brave Knight, the Kingdom of Champions, being seen all over the world. In over 80 countries, millions of fans watching at home. An absolutely packed Leaf Sports City, and they were electric in that fight. From the time those guys walked out the ramp to the time the fight ended, they never stopped cheering. You gotta love that sort of that fandom that we're getting here in Bahrain is pretty awesome. No doubt we're most likely gonna have a very, very happy Shake Khaled in the house. Decision. It looks like Carlos Kramer has a decision, folks. We're about to get to it. We're about to go to the cage. and gentlemen, give it up for these two warriors. What an incredible fight. We go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score the belt. 30-27 for your winner, the fighting pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kuhenke. Sportsmanship, ladies and gentlemen, that's what it's all about. All right, I'm here with Hamza Kohenji. Once again, we are in Bahrain. You're victorious. How are you feeling right now, Hamza? Go ahead. Uh, first, I want to say, alhamdulillah, for God giving me this power and heart. Thank them. We are KHK MMA. Sheikh Khalid taking good care of us. We become better every day. And you'll see how Bahrainis will take over the MMA. So, so talk to me about the fight. Obviously a very capable opponent. That was a beautiful slam. It seemed like the wrestling that you've been learning, making your trips up to Russia, going everywhere, it seems like it really paid off in this fight. Yeah, alhamdulillah again. Uh, I didn't have the best prep. I had some injuries in this camp, but we are Arab. This is not our sport. We like to fight. We all fight since we are young. Since the beginning of history, we always fight. So I never take back fights. Well, Hamzi, I gotta ask you, I mean, that's three fights in a row, that's three big wins. What is next for you? I mean, are you looking at a title shot? Is that what you want? Do you want that brave gold around your way? A new bantamweight champion at the end of the night. I gotta believe your eyes are on the title. Of course, every fighter who fights, wants that title. So, if Brave wants to give me a shot, give me a shot, I'm ready. If they want to give me another opponent, let them give me another opponent, I'm always ready. 
Well, Hobbs, that was an incredible performance. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the fighting pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kohenji. Final words. Bahrain, well, I thank everyone who helped me from my heart. Everyone of you, thank you for helping me before the fight. And in the fight, and who didn't see me, they were watching me on the internet, or in their work, or in their work. And who didn't see me, they were watching me. If you see me, I'm going to see you later. Thank you. Hamza Kohenji! Friday, October 28th, Brave CF returns for an epic night of fights as the fastest growing promotion in MMA closes out the latest Combat Kingdom series in epic style. At Brave CF 65, the pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kaheji gets back to action as he takes on Colombian MMA icon Eduardo Mora in the main event. Also set for fight night is the much anticipated return of Jose Shorty Torres as the number five flyweight in the world goes up in weight to welcome Arab superstar Izzedin Alderbani. Tune in to witness the best athletes from around the world in epic battles and electrifying action. Brave CF 65, live from the Khalifa Sports City Arena in the Kingdom of Bahrain.
and gentlemen, this is a headline fight of the evening. Three five minute rounds in the Bantamweight division. Before we begin, let me ask you the kingdom of Bahrain. Hal and Tomb Musta Adin. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This is the mixed martial artist with a professional record of 13 wins and three losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 60.9 kilograms. Representing ATP performance training and fighting out of La Pata, Argentina. Give it up for Nahul El Rumble Gandolfi. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man, the mixed martial artist, with a professional record of eight wins and two losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.6 kilograms. Representing KHK MMA and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Give it up for the pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kahadji. For fighter instructions, referee Alan Jackson. Hamza Koheji is in the black and red brave shorts and Gaddafi is in the green and black and Gaddafi, although he got booed and the cheers, he seemed to be soaking in the energy of the crowd, harnessing that. Well, we've already seen with Dumar Hoa that he has the potential to come in here and be a massive spoiler. Heavy body kick straight away by Gandalfi and... Gandalfi nice, clinching. Nice knee, some inside clinch work here. The Muay Thai shorts would indicate he's happy to be there. Good kicks to the body. Nice left hand by Hamza. Coming out of that southpaw stance. Oh, oh beautiful head, head kick! Head he head caught him! Is watching. He could be out! Big knees by Hamza, right in front of his corner, changes level, gets the takedown! And Gandalfi! This could be the best thing for Gandalfi, you to get a recover. little bit of time to recover, get his wits about him. I'm, su I'm surprised with the takedown, Kirk. I'm not going to lie. Did that surprise you that Hamza initiated the takedown? It did, and it looks like Nahum may have learned how to do a rubber guard in his backyard. Just covering up to them shots. Hamza landing some good shots from top position. Beautiful dexterity from Gandolfi. Playing a little bit of rubber guard. Hamza trying to transition and pass, but Gandolfi stands at the gates and says, Thou shalt not pass. How long have you been waiting to say that, Phil? Campbell? All night, all night, no okay. The crowd getting behind their hometown fighter, but... I'd like Hamza to see Hamza Kuheji stand up and back out of here. I was surprised by that, Kuheji, I can't believe he got the takedown. It looked like he basically had Gandalfi nearly out of there with the shots landed, initiated the takedown, and as you said, this has allowed him to recover. A whole start with a beautiful head kick. But Gandalfi looks to have his wits about him, trying to make life uncomfortable as Hamza. Good hammer fist there. He has that collar grip. He's playing a little bit of rubber guard. The only danger with rubber guard is it leaves you completely exposed on one side. All your opponent needs to do is push down the leg and pass. However, it does open itself up to a myriad of submissions. You can go a one-arm triangle. You can switch to switch to an Ome Plata. There's a go-go Plata this week in the IMAPs. Exactly. Let's see a go-go Plata. But Nuffy definitely got his bearings back. Foot on the hip, just trying to push Hamza away. At this point now, is he saying, why did I take him down? I should have maybe stayed standing, but 
I have huge respect for every it. fighter that wants to dominate his opponent in all ranges, in wrestling, in submissions, in striking, but it's not always the right thing to do in a fight. Looking for an arm here, potentially. Koheji needs to keep the hips square here. You can see Gandolfi yeah. trying to work that angle, trying to slip that leg over the head of Hamza Koheji. You can see him working for it. Oh, cheeky twos in the cage. Experience, experience, not cheeky. Hamza driving the forehead into the jawline. Gandolfi. Referee calls for a little bit more action. And I think this is where Gandolfi's going to be more comfortable. After that opening exchange, I think he's going to want to stay here. You can see him working that high guard. And referee just warning for toes in the fence. For those of you in Brave Nation, not aware of all the nuances of the unified rules of mixed martial arts, you, can't hold, you cannot hold onto the fence with your fingers or with your toes. The referee calling for a little bit more action, but I'm enjoying the tactical battle we're seeing here on the ground. There's a looking for that arm as well, switching again. Potential triangle here if he can pop that arm through. Good work by Hamza Koweji, but there's, the arm bar now. there's potential for an arm bar here. Hamza Koweji doing the right thing by stacking yeah. down, immobilizing the hips of Gandolfi, stopping him from stopping him from really popping and, and hipping into that. Gandolfi loses position now. Potentially because of them hammer fist raining down. Nice posture from Hamza Koweji on the toes, sitting back on the heels. Needs to be careful putting his hand on the mat there. He's inviting a, a Kimura. I don't know if he's shown that he's not going to just lie here and let you grind out the, the, the round. Mm. He's going to. Very dangerous off his back, throwing things up, keeping Hamza Koweji honest on the ground. Right in front of the corner. There's Hamza, all giving advice. Real technical battle we're seeing on the ground here. The dexterity as well of, of Gandolfi. He, he looks like he's made of elastic bands the way he can just throw his, switch the hips and throw the legs over. Hamza Kweji is trying to launch strikes to keep Gandolfi honest here. Ten second clapper, bringing an end to the first round. Looking for that Kimura grip that you called for a moment ago, Phil. And some elbows from the bottom. Real unorthodox elbows. But I think, I think without being unkind, I think that's how you would explain Mahul Gandalfi is unorthodox and awkward. Meaning that as meaning that as a compliment, of course, yeah. you know, from, from talking to him. He, he's enjoyed fight week. He's come in here. Half boiler. And he's bound to be he's bound to be somewhat buoyed by what he's seen there. He's, he's, he's bound to be buoyed by, by how well he did off his back. Be interesting to see if at the beginning of the second round he goes for a takedown. And we get to see El Robles grappling game from top. He's on bottom, it was very impressive. I wonder what the corner of Hamza be saying. There's the head kick to start, and you can clearly see. And Gaddafi was in trouble. A referee was going to close just off target with that knee. It's a beautiful but striking. The change of levels here really surprised me. But Kerrick, as you said, you know, he might want to just dominate his opponent everywhere, and that could be it. But I wonder, will the corner, okay, he should be telling him if you get him in trouble like that. Finish him, yeah. Feet. Lay on the strikes, lay on the pressure. I think as we often talk about it, the fighters, fighters revert to type when they're inside the cage. They go to what they know naturally. For Hamza Kuwaiti, that's his wrestling. That's his dominant ground and positional control. Again, after being hurt early in the opening round, he got to recover a bottom, got the strength with submission. So, in some ways, Gandalfi's going back to his corner, probably with a little bit of confidence, knowing he can hang with him on the mat. Hamza Kweji just waiting for his gum shoe. There we go, well caught by the referee. Excellent hands, must have been a wicked keeper back in the day. Good hands by a referee. Round two on their way. And now he's looking to open up with that body kick again. Just needs to keep his hands up, his hands are a little loose in defense. And he is now the one who engages in that clinch. Both in that over under position, you can see Hamza has wrist control at the minute, digging in for an underhook. Perhaps an arm drag to get himself out of this position. Yeah, 
that's the game we'd like to see the pride of Bahrain play. Watch out for that high kick from Hamza again. He had great success, nice counter left hand after catching the kick. Again, going with that left head kick. Again, and his shot seems to wobble Gandalfi again there. I thought potentially we could have seen a flying knee there, but Gandalfi just... He found his head down wheel in a very unorthodox way. He's looking away from the strikes, leaving himself somewhat exposed. Now he has the head underneath the chin. If he were to score a takedown now, it could be interesting. Has that body lock on Hamza Koeji. Oh, ten submissions, of course, Gandalfi, so... He's probably happy to get it to the mat. May try that broomstick shelf takedown. Hamza Koeji. Take the back and he does. What dexterity just to sneak that hook in from there. Dal Sim like street fighter. It's like fighting an octopus out there. Trying to slide off the top but here. Good transition to the arm bar straight away. Hamza gets out of there. The arm was in danger, but. Just like Taylor Swift, he shook it off. Hamza lands a good left hand in that combination in ground and pound. But again, Gandalfi, although in the eyes of the judges, he's in the worst position here and probably losing the round. He'd be, in some ways, he'd be happy here, Phil. What I, his level of what I like is his level of activity off his back. He's not just stalling, he's not just trying not just trying to invoke the stand-up from the referee, he's trying to create angles. He's putting the foot on the hip as we see. He's, he's using the high guard. He's playing around rubber guard. The and he's threatening. The elbow's just past the point yeah. of the, the fulcrum of the groin there. May try and sneak for... Reverse triangle? Yeah. Everything's unorthodox. But it's, it, it's working for him. He's 13 and three. This unorthodox method is... is you can't train for somebody who is so loose and, and, and you don't know what you're, they're going to do next. It's not technically sound, you could say. He has the arm of of Gandolfi trapped. May look to posture it, but again, he looks like he's searching for that reverse triangle. If he can just break the posture a little of Hamza Koeji. And that right arm, the elbow seems to be past the point of extension from that elbow, so the arm error is not a threat here, but if you nail it, it's like an octopus here. Hamza now puts him in a very awkward position, trapping that right leg down, stretching the hamstrings. Just past the shin, oh, that's a, an incredibly painful position, just that shin slice across the thigh. But again, the dexterity of Gandolfi, or Gandolfi rather, sorry. Uses that knee shield now. Shots raining down on top from Hansa Kohiji. But again, rolling is Gandalfi. Looking for that armbar again, potentially. Where is the arm of Hamza? He again is trying to... Good awareness and posturing from Hamza Kohiji. He, he sees the threat, he's not freaking out, because oftentimes when a fighter feels that and tries to pull out of it quickly, that's what locks a submission in. So he's just taking his time, he's being methodical. Transitions into full side control now, landing elbows. elbows. They are huge elbows from Hamza Koheji. Switches the scarf. These are punishing shots coming down on top, looking to hit. Potential crucifix here. Hamza may be looking to take mount. If he does expect big shots. But Gandolfi doing the right thing, trying to get that knee shield in. And again, just slowly, almost sneakily, worms his way back into that half guard or guard position. Takes the body triangle from the bottom. Big hammer fist from Hamza on top, and again, looking to throw the legs up, but... He's just going to pass here. Again, huge strikes from Hamza. Finishing off the round with heavy, heavy rain on top. Knee on belly, that's the horn for the end of the second round, and... A big, big second round for Hamza Kohiji and Bahrain reacts to the pride of Bahrain. Someone on the feet, sorry Phil, someone's no, on the I'm feet, I'm just looking at 
Gandalf, he, he, the way he was sort of almost, as you said, he was turning away from strikes, which is one thing you're told never to do. And he bowed his head a lot down to the side here. And that head kick is there. Again, as we've seen in the opening round, there is a head kick there. Hamza Kuzhaji has a brilliant corner. I believe that they're telling him, stay standing with this fighter. Don't go down to the ground with him. You don't need to. There's far less danger to him from standing than there is on the mat. Not quite on camera here, but you have got to admire the tell work. Oh, I Eldar, Eldar Absolutely. I st some of the best I've ever seen. I st oh, my God. That is some serious tell work. But if I operated the tell, put Eldar off in there, I'd throw me back out. I was genuinely being cooled by the tile from yeah. Eldar Eldorov. Fantastic work, sir. Thank you. Serious work. Head coach, of course, of KHK MMA team. And uh, he's giving out lessons in tell work for cornermen. Excellent work. Back to the fight, though. Gandalfi, potentially two rounds in the hole here. So Hamza Kahiji, be interesting to see, Kirk, if that tactic is employed of staying on the feet. Just drops that right hand as he's coming forward, Gandalfi, and just fearing for that counter. You can almost preempt it coming. There's the kick. I poke. Referee just asks him, is he okay? And Hamza says, yes, I'm fine. But it was a poke. Hamza just, Hamza just shakes it off. Here we have beautiful trip take time. Inside trip from Hamza Kuweji. But again, the octopus. But he's beautiful in the crucifix position, but. Could sneak out the back. Heavy shots coming out from this crucifix position. Referee watching this one carefully. Has that arm trapped, forcing. Gandolfi to buckle the hips, which again, if he doesn't get out of position, is going to make him more tired. He's trying his best to get out of there, but caught in his crucifix position. That heavy shots, and sometimes this gives the referee a decision just because the fighter can't get out from the bottom field. He's trying everything he has as Gandolfi. It's, it's not intelligent defense. They may not necessarily be concussive shots, but he's not intelligently defending himself while in this position, which could lead to a TKO stoppage from the referee. Nasty shots, and all of a sudden the booking has stopped, and la heavy shots coming down. Accurate shots, and you can see Ganafi trying to turn away. To his credit, is trying to do everything he can. Roy Nelson used to get in this position and, and count. Big cut under the, the left eye, Phil. It is indeed. Roy Nelson used to get in this position and count the number of strikes he was throwing allowed to prompt the referee to stop it. These are big punishing starts. Well, referee 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 Hansa Kahiji gets the finish, which is only the fourth of his career, and probably in the biggest fight of his career, in front of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The pride of Bahrain is victorious. Big, big performance by Hamza Kohiji. And as I said, like, a lot of pressure was heaped on his shoulders coming into this one. The responsibility carries a great weight, but he, he used that to put on a huge performance against a very unorthodox opponent and a very game opponent. So a big, big win for Hamza in front of his home fans. And again, as I said, that's only his fourth stoppage. So one, I suppose, the contradictions are, are the, the point people are pointing is he's not a finisher. Big, big finish on like As we say, once you get into that position and, and you completely immobilize your opponent, you leave the referee very little option. He had opened up a cut, he was landing strikes. There we see no argument from Gandalf. He put up a very, a, a very brave effort in his brave combat finish debut against a vastly more experienced hometown hero. And of course, he got bumped up to the main event, so you want pressure, you want more pressure, main events. Obviously, the circumstances around the fight cancellation of Jose Shorty Torres and Marcelo Dor. Hopefully, we get to see that one quarter down the line, and we wish Jose all the best. Take some time away, champ, and... You can see just what it means to Hamza Kowaji, and just what it means to the people here.
Let's send it up and let's make it official. The roaring line, Carlos Kramer. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, another amazing bout. This one goes to an end at one minute and 44 seconds of round three. Your winner by TKO to the strikes, the pride of Bahrain, Hansa Golhatchi! At Brave 1, there was Hamza Kuheji at Brave 2. Hamza Kuheji at Brave 29. Ladies and gentlemen, your hero! First, first of all, I want to say, Alhamdulillah, for everything God gave me. And Alhamdulillah for giving Sheikh Khalid in my life. Sheikh Khalid. Sheikh Khalid and Sheikh Nasser, they changed all athletes' life in this country, and he changed my life. This year, in May, me and my brother, we lost a dear friend, uh, my boxing coach. My boxing coach always told me that I have good striking, I should only believe in myself. Today, I want, I threw my punches, I, and I knew I can fight uh, striking or grappling, anything. And. I want to thank my team, the best team in the world, KHK. Bahrain. Bahrain. I'm scared to tell you all. Today is the most important day in my life. I'm going to get everything to me. And without you, today will be another day. I'm going to play a fight. I'm going to play everyone here. أقدر كل واحد يهني شيخ ناصر مشكور كل واحد كلكم اللي يتوا مشكورين وإن شاء الله البحرين مو بس في الأمم في كل شيء أقوى شيء. Ladies and gentlemen, Hamza Kuhaji. Friday, October 28th, Brave CF returns for an epic night of fights as the fastest growing promotion in MMA closes out the latest Combat Kingdom series in epic style. At Brave CF 65, the pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kaheji gets back to action as he takes on Colombian MMA icon Eduardo Mora in the main event. Also set for fight night is the much anticipated return of Jose Shorty Torres as the number five flyweight in the world goes up in weight to welcome Arab superstar Izzedine Alderbani. Tune in to witness the best athletes from around the world in epic battles and electrifying action. Brave CF 65, live from the Khalifa Sports City Arena in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Training out of the world famous KHK gym under legendary coaches Eldar Eldarov and Yusuf Koheji, Hamza, the pride of Bahrain Koheji, is undoubtedly one of the brightest stars in the Arab MMA world today. Hamza Koheji, KHK MMA from Bahrain. My preparation was good. Even though the pandemic happened, I never stopped training. I did a quarantine in the gym, me and a few guys, and we just kept on training. We never took a day off. Now he faces ferocious Welshman Aiden James in front of a hometown crowd in Combat Kingdom. He's a good opponent, he's technical, his striking is not bad, and his ground game is good. Currently boasting an impressive 9-2 record and riding a three-fight winning streak, Koheji is high on confidence, primed and ready to take on the sternest test of his MMA career when he faces off against proven finisher and highly regarded prospect Aiden James. Aiden James fighting out of the Chris Street Academy in Swansea, Wales. I feel like um, it's a good fight, do you know what I mean? Hamza's got a good record. He's on a good win streak. He's, um, do you know what I mean? He's, he's tough, he's durable. He's got good wrestling, good grappling, probably working on striking a lot, just as we all are working on something and getting better. Um, like, for me, it's just, a, it's just an opponent. I mean, it's a fight, it's an opportunity. I don't really always just get too fixated. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to go in and do me, do you know what I mean? I'm going, to let my, I'm going to let my instincts take over and that's what's going to be. 
Hamza Koheji and Aiden James are both complete mixed martial artists. Koheji will have to implement intelligent movement, counter-striking and wrestling to shut down the dangerous offense of Welshman Aiden James. Making his Brave Combat Federation debut all the way back at Brave 1 in September of 2016, we have seen Hamza Koheji evolve from a young prospect to a bona fide contender. An impressive win for the pride of Bahrain could very well place him front and center for a shot at the Brave Bantamweight Championship of the world. Can Koheji take the next step in his MMA career and show the world what the people of Bahrain already know, that he is the real deal and will stop at nothing to realize his dream of becoming the first ever Bahraini mixed martial arts world champion. Aiden James will never be a journeyman. He's too great, but this is the biggest fight of his career. I don't make predictions of fights. I just let my instincts take over. Um, whatever's gonna come is gonna come, do you know what I mean? I'm just gonna turn up. I put in the work. I, put, I feel, do you know what I mean, work as hard as I possibly can for this fight. So um, when the opportunity presents itself, I will take it. Hey Aiden, I hope you're ready. Let's fight. Brave Nation, before we move on at Brave Combat Federation 42, we'd like to thank Dalla, our marketing partners, and the Be Ready Volunteers team, who are ensuring the safety of everyone involved in Combat Kingdom. Let's bring our next two warriors into the Brave Cage. Our first warrior, hiding out of the blue corner from Chris Rees Academy in Wales, give it up! for Aiden James. Aiden James fighting out of Chris Ree Academy, Swansea, Wales. Not a lot of people are saying enough about Aiden James in this fight from me. The proud Welshman, the Welsh wizard has a professional record of four and one, is incredibly tall for the weight class, standing at 5'11", has implemented a new strength and conditioning program, and you can see that, you know, he now looks like a 25-year-old man. He is well built, he's ready to go. Every single one of his four wins have been via finish. Three by KO, one by submission. Speaking of submissions, this young man at 24 years old earned his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt under one of the best grapplers in the world, Ashley Williams. So he really is unquestionably the real deal. He has the opportunity to go in there, upset the apple cart and score a huge win over the local fighter. And let's welcome his opponent, fighting out of the red corner from KHK MMA in the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Please welcome the pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kuhachi. Eric, you do not earn a nickname like the pride of Bahrain by chance. You put the work in, you carry the hopes of an entire nation upon your shoulders. Hamza Kouaisi will do everything he can tonight to make the people of Bahrain proud. Phil, we are looking at the pride of Bahrain and although this arena is empty due to the COVID-19 global pandemic, I think the cheers from the streets are gonna be so loud, we'll be able to hear him through these concrete walls. This man is a hero. Brings with him a nine and two professional record, breaking down his wins. Two have come by way of KO, two have come by way of submission, five have come by decision. In his last fight, he defeated Nandul Gandolfi by a third round TKO at Brave 28. That was in November of 2019 in the Kingdom of Bahrain. A very intelligent counter striker who coming out of that southpaw stance chains his striking and his wrestling attacks so wonderfully. And obviously training under head coach Eldar Eldarov, his all round game is heavily influenced and infused with that gritty Dajestani grappling ethos. 
So you're riding a three fight win streak, making his eighth appearance inside the Brea Arena. Has also previously spent time at Fortis MMA getting different looks and that's very important for a fighter to, to you have your own gym, but to, if you get the opportunity to train at different gyms, get different bodies, that's, that's only gonna bring your game on more, Kerrick. It's not just fight gyms he's been going, going to. He's gone to Dagestan, which has arguably the greatest wrestling in the world, and he worked with Dagestani wrestlers for a full six weeks. Said the first couple of weeks were miserable, managed to hold his own after that. Phil, Aiden James is an incredible striker with incredible reach. For this weight class, it's, it's out of this world. He's the 1%. I think this fight is gonna come down to distance management. The pride of Bahrain has to get close enough to touch his opponent. When that happens, they're the same height. But from the outside, length matters. Well, here we go, a huge fight in prospect, and we need a huge voice to bring it in, Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation. This next battle is three five-minute rounds in a catchweight bout of 63 kilograms. Brave Nation, introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of four wins and one loss. He stands 100. 80 centimeters tall and weighs already 62.7 kilograms. Fighting out of Chris Rees Academy in Wales. Give it up for Aidan James. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and two losses. He stands 100. 70 centimeters tall and weighs already 63 kilograms. Fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain and representing KHK MMA. Give it up for the pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kohadji. Your referee is Ribbon Saber. Phil Hamzakuheji is one of the smartest fighters that we see in this cage. Walk us through the uh, tail of the tape. Both men relatively the same age. The distinct height advantage goes to Aiden James. Will he be able to implement that length? Keep Hamzakuheji at the end of his punches or can the wrestling heavy phenom style of Koheji win the day? All right, Hamzakuheji, as I said, one of the most intelligent fighters that you'll see in a cage anywhere. Watch him in the first round, watch him in the second round. Sometimes he looks like a totally different fighter, employing totally different strategies. Very intelligently, he's trying to feel his opponent out, using footwork, trying to draw in an attack from Aiden James. He doesn't want to open with the attacks. He wants Aiden to attack him and start to get some reads. If he can get some reads, he can put his opponent on his back and proceed from there. Interestingly though, as Southpaw a shorter southpaw with very good wrestling. It would be hard to find a training partner. Well, what Aiden James was able to do was bring in PK Zade into his camp, who himself is a southpaw, a little bit shorter and a fantastic wrestler. So that was a perfect made training partner for him. Doing the stalking now is Aiden James. Koheji just careers forward. Koheji got caught twice coming in. Not the cleanest, but he got caught. Like to see him switch his attack up, maybe use those feet a little bit. First two lunges with the hands did not work. And the first shot is gonna be the most interesting, the most telling aspect of this fight. There we go, there's the kicks. That's what I'd like to see some more of. Aiden James is now doing what Hamza Kuheji wanted to do. Hamza Kweji showing a little bit of evolution in his all-round game by showing that he does have powerful hands. Hamza Kuheji, the pride of Bahrain, has powerful everything. Powerful fists, kicks, knees, elbows, mind, submissions, and wrestling. Aiden James switching stances a little bit now. Now working out of that southpaw stance, very interesting. I'm sure this is something uh, Koeji doesn't often see. Southpaws being so rare 
in mixed martial arts, so having to face another southpaw could mix things up a little bit for him. Nice intelligent st uh, stance switching there from Aiden James. That shifting is very impressive. He's using the shifts to get a read in his opponent, get a sense of his speed, get a sense of his timing, get a sense of what kind of defenses he's going to be able to employ. And when he thinks he understands his, his opponent's everything, he's going to try and knock him out. Hamza Kwesi trying to keep his lead foot on the outside of that lead foot of Aiden James. Aiden James trying to do the same, but just mirrored. Nice crashing inside leg kick for the southpaw. You can see Aiden James very much trying to keep this at the jabbing range. Brave Nation as a southpaw. The biggest blow he's trying to land is a kick to the That inside leg kick may well have been a little set up for it. Nice stiff jab again from Aiden James, starting to loosen up, up a little bit. See Aiden there to show it to Hamza Koeji, almost to try and knock the thought of diving in for that takedown out of his mind. Phil, I gotta say I'm impressed by Hamza Kuheji not trying to tie up his opponent, push it up against the cage, not try and take him down. He's trying to exchange with a taller man. So tall order and he's having some luck. Nice that, low kick. That was a huge leg kick from Hamza Kuheji. But then gets led up a little bit by Aiden James. He lands a combination on him. Got a piece of Aiden's calf there though, and that may be why Aiden shifted stances. Like after every time Aiden throws the, the kick, it's almost as if Hamza is waiting to counter that kick with a takedown. Aiden's throwing something to keep him distracted. Hamza larger the, largely the aggressor. Aiden James trying to pop that jab down and come over the top. Nice kick again from Hamza Koeji. That was an attempt at that liver shot. One liver shot can end a fight and shift and again, calf, kick to the calf. I think when Aiden James shifts, you're gonna see that calf kick come off almost instantly from Hamza Kuheji. Hamza still trying just to get it. Oh, oh big shot. He wobbled him, he wobbled the legs a little. Look at him. The legs were wobbled there, 10 seconds left. Does Hamza Kuwaiti put the pressure He's on? He's hurting him, Phil. Does he look for that lockout? Look for the liver. Aiden James just trying to shake off those cobwebs and has a minute Woo! to do so. Biggest. Big closing effort Biggest. the pride of Bahrain. Biggest shot of the round landed by Hamza Kuwaiti. Figures out that distance just at the last second. Green Hill replay. Where, what? Look at the sweat fly off their head. Spin kick could have taken him out. Gentle shift back, and there is that devastating low kick from Hamza Kuheji. Slides in behind a right hook, measuring his opponent. Boom! That's a Boom! Beautiful one Go two. the hands. That's an absolutely beautiful, technical, crisp one-two from Hamza Kuheji. It'll be interesting to see, does he start the fight? Does he start the second round? Very much the same way as he finished the first round by taking the fight to Aiden James. Or does he try and act a little bit more technically? Phil, I think he's going to stalk him in terms of distance. Wait for his moment to let loose, and then he's going to let loose. End of the first round came at just the right time for Aiden James. Gives him the minute to shake off those cobwebs, recover a little bit. Touch of the hands, showing good sportsmanship. Now it's back to trying to knock each other out. Hamza Koeji throwing a little bit more feints this time, being a little bit more aggressive, obviously. Boyd and there confidence. it is. Trying to land that shot again. I believe that was a straight and then an overhand. Partially checked is the kick by Aiden James. Hamza Kuheji, as I said, one of the most intelligent fighters you'll ever seen. He's now learned what works. Forward movement while being aware of the being aware of the distance, straight followed by a hook. When his opponent shifts, you're gonna see that calf attacked. Nice straight down the middle there from Aiden James. Kuheji reading the distance a little bit better in this second round. 
Shot landed. Over the top comes Aiden James. And we've yet to see a takedown attempt from Hamza Kweji, which I think is surprising everyone. It's impressing me, Phil. It's what I expected to have happen within the first two minutes. But I do believe that Hamza Kouheji believes, I think he knows he can win this fight standing, so that's what he's going to do. And now it's Hamza Kouheji leading the dance a little bit. Forcing Aiden James to miss. Corner of Hamza Kweji calling for the one two, calling for the double jab straight there. Phil Hamza Kweji has had the most luck in this fight moving forward explosively. We need to see just a little bit more of that, but he's a smarter man than I am. He knows more about what's going on. He's holding back just a little bit, but I know he's going to let loose soon. Aiden James lands a nice stiff jab there. It's again, like all the fights we've had tonight, very tightly contested by premier mixed martial artists. Aiden James now landing a couple of strikes of his own. Hamza Kuheji's corner wants him to pull the trigger. Expect it to happen momentarily. Aiden James seems to be rediscovering his job just a little bit. Oh, another Ooh. huge shot over the top. Big left hand. Phil, big props to Hamza Kouheji for not tying up his opponent there. When they came close, could have looked for a body lock. Didn't do it, wants to stand and bang. Big, big developments in the striking game. Again, landing heavy power shots on Aiden James. There it is. Two minutes left in this second round. Very much hanging in the balance. Koeji needs to be careful of not chasing down Aiden James, just landing his strikes when he's within range. Again, this is very much turning into to more of a more of more of a kickboxing bout. Uh, Koheji got a little shot there in the eye. I don't think that I don't think it was an eye poke. I think it was just the knuckle of the glove landing on the eye. Very, very, very tightly contested bout here, Kirik. It is. There's huge respect being shown by both fighters, as there should be, because either at any moment, Hamza Kuheji had his greatest luck letting the fight just pulling on that trigger and exploding off the line that's what he needs to do just a little bit more in the final one minute of this fight would you advise a takedown at this stage in any uh, for either of man for either man the fight being so tightly contested would a takedown change the complexity and just as i say that hamzi hamza koeji trying to dig in and get the takedown defended well by aiden james a takedown absolutely would a takedown for either fighter could well ice this round for him Thirty seconds left. Well, Hamza Kweji again attempt the takedown. Aiden James trying to use that superior reach, taking pot shots from the outside. Aiden faked his opponent out with a touch to the thigh. Hamza Kweji did the same thing. Comes in now with a jumping right hook to the melon. I think it was countered by a lead hook from Aiden James. But again, a real fascinating technical bout here. Round ends. Phil, I often ask you to play judge. I'm not going to on this one because I don't want to. No, this was an incredibly close round of mixed martial arts action. As has the first been, both men landing shots on one another. That's still the most telling part of this fight has been that big strike landed by Hamza Koeji at the closing stanzas of the first round. Aiden James putting his boxing together very well in this round. So Hamza Koeji always dangerous with that heavy power left over the top. Still very much all to play for going into the third round. Now if you're in the corner of Aiden James, 
what are you telling them right now? Because we know the game plan of Hamza Kowaji and it seems to be working for him. But what if you're Chris Ray right now, what are you saying? Distance management, stay on the outside, circle, keep taking pot shots from the outside. Don't worry about getting your stance low and getting the hip shot on. Stay up high, long range shots from the outside. Our referee, Reb and Sabre, just waiting until the cage door is closed to commence hostilities. Corner being James telling him he needs the fight of his life here. No question, Phil. We don't know what the judges have done. You never know what judges are going to do. The fight could be decided in the next five minutes. Both these fighters know it. And they're, they're going to fight like the last round of their life. There we go. Hamza Kwesi trying to come over the top with that big looping shot. Just a little bit shy. Doesn't quite catch it. That's a huge calf kick again from Hamza Kwesi. Hamza Kwesi now pulling that trigger. Boom! He lands again. KHK corner of Hamza Kwesi calling for pressure, pressure, pressure. As we say, Aiden James trying to implement that lateral movement. Nice little bit of head movement to get off the center line. Phil Hamza Kouhedji has found the style that won in the first round. Move forward aggressively and then explode off that line unexpectedly. Aiden James coming in with the switch. Didn't quite get off, but at least he knows that, at least he knows that switch is there for him. James throwing with bad intentions too. Both these fighters want to put their other man's lights out. There's no range finding, no feeling the feeling the fighter out. They're trying to end it. Both of them. Aiden James movement. A slightly more fluid, but Hamza Koeji is has that stance where he can land a power shot at any time. Nice roll under in combination from Aiden James. Can he string together the boxing a little bit more and land something more telling or can Kamza Koeji come over the top with another big shot? That's a nice shot from Aiden James. Seems to be finding the jab a little bit more again. What we're seeing now, Phil, is the second, the first round morphing into the second round. Again, this fight is so close. Koheji attempts to take down, abandons it, realizes that he doesn't have it. Nice straight shot there from Aiden James again. And this fight is so, so close. All it's going to take is for one person to land a, a big strike, a big leg kick, a big knockdown, something that sticks out in the mind of the judges. Swing and a miss from Hamza Koheji. A little bit past the halfway mark. We've seen that the, uh, the fighters ebb and flow. First one's ahead by a little bit, then the other is. And in on that leg. Diving in for the underhooks is. Oh, taking the back now. Good submit, a good defense on the takedown from Aiden James. Does he try it again? Or, oh, that's a stiff jab. Excellent work from the outside by James. Excellent calf kick by Hamza Kuheji. Both these men are starting to land with a little bit more frequency on one another. The corner of KHK are calling for the knockout from Hamza Kuheji. Does he overcommit the strikes and leave himself vulnerable potentially? He's had big luck with it, Phil. I think if he throws that southpaw, two, three, the straight left followed up by the right hook, he can put his opponent out. I think he puts himself in more danger by backing up. Another big strike from Eden James with the rear hand. Boom, there he goes. Aiden James weathered the storm very adroitly. Into the third round here. Last minute of the third and final round. Can Hamza score that takedown? Change levels beautifully to get in on the takedown. Aiden James doing a good job to defend and create the distance. Hard to take down an opponent whose hips are that high. 
30 seconds to go. Umzaku Heji's corner is exhorting him to attack and attack and attack. Hitting James N on the tech time. Has the leg hooked. Great defense from Hamza Koeji. Beautiful wrestling D on both sides, and that's why we're seeing such an outstanding stand-up battle. Ten seconds. On either fight or land something big in the final ten seconds. There it is. What a fantastic back and forth battle. Both these men couldn't be separated by 15 minutes of action only to be separated by the judges. Beautiful technical work being displayed by both men. Let's take another look at some of that action. Both men trying to utilize a little bit of boxing and jabs landed by both men, straights landed by both men. I, I really, and honestly, I'm not just saying this for the sake of being a contrarian or sitting on the fence. I genuinely could not separate these two fighters. I would not want to be a judge right now, Kerrick. Phil, if you look over at my notes, I actually wrote down 10-10, and that's something I absolutely forbid in judges' training. There's no two things in history that are absolutely identical, but that was one tough fight to call, and that was one terrific exchange of mixed martial arts action. So realistically, with this fight being what we saw to be a very, very, very close fight, both men, incredible martial artists, showed incredible heart and skill, would you be comfortable if a fight like this was, was called a draw? There is no such thing as a draw in mixed martial arts. That, I mean, they happen, they're given out, but no things, no two things are truly equal. That said, if they call it a draw, I will, I will absolutely be happy because I want to see this fight again. I was just about to say the positive of the fight being called a draw would be that we would have to do it all over again, but again, Judges scorecards taking a little while to tabulate, which lets you know that this fight was incredibly close. And there you see what this sport is all about. There you see what this organization, Brave Combat Federation, is all about. Respect, heart. Tabulating the numbers is one thing, Phil, but in the final analysis in combat sports, you can reduce it to who hurt who more? And by that standard, I do think Hamza, the pride of Bahrain, Kuheji did hurt his opponent just a little bit more than he was hurt, particularly in that second round. There was also that big shot in the closing stanzas of the first round. So Carlos Kramer stepping into the cage, which means that we have an official decision. Roaring Lion make it official. All right, Brave Nation, what an amazing fight between these two in a classic battle for Brave Nation to see. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 29-28, Kuheji. Your next judge scores about 29-28, James. And your third judge scores about 29 28 for your winner by split decision the pride of bahrain hamza Kohaji! and the crowd goes wild hamza Kohaji, the pride of bahrain is now one step closer to the world championship a fantastic win a landmark win for Hamza Koheji, and as you say, with a performance like that, he is edging his way ever closer to knocking on Stephen Lohman's door. Runs now his professional record to 10 and 2, and a win against Aiden James. Now, if you don't know who Aiden James is, a win against him is huge. That shows you just how good Hamza Koheji is. Brave Nation, we're getting a little recap of some of that action as the virtual fighter post-fight interview gets set up. That was one of the most telling moments of the fight. Here we see what Hamza Kuheji had his greatest success with, leaping forward, throwing straights and hooks. His opponent was 
absolutely capable of doing the same thing as you can see right there. This was a beautiful back and forth bout, and I do believe that the judges got it right, but I do not think that the judge that saw it the other way was wrong. It comes down to an opinion. I think in the majority they got it dead right, and you're seeing that in this action. It is a back and forth fight. Kick denied. Hamza Kuheji flying forward, landing big shots. And we will take it up to the interview. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by a victorious Hamza Kuheji. Hamza, how are you feeling after a win, after a fight like that? First, I want to say before answering any question, Phil, I want to thank God, alhamdulillah. I had a long year, long year of canceled fights, rescheduling fights, training without my team, my, my Russian team, they can't come to Bahrain. So we had few guys. And I would like to thank His Highness Sheikh Khalid for giving us the opportunity. My coaches, Eldar, Rodrigo, my brother, my team. How I'm feeling? I feel good, but I don't like the way I fought. You know, like there was no sparring partners in the camp. I had a long camp. It was, you know, it was a fight. It was back and forth with Aiden. Aiden, but feeling good like I fought with Aiden. I was just about to say, you say you're not happy with your performance. I was just about to say, that's potentially the best I've seen you look inside the Brave Cage. Your boxing has come on leaps and bounds. You weren't relying on wrestling, so give yourself a little bit of credit. You looked very good in there, Hamza. Yeah, well, one thing, like, I don't know, but I need to see the fight. But, you know, my, I didn't work on my wrestling. Like, I didn't have any wrestling, a lot of wrestling sparring partners for this fight. Mm -hmm. So I had to strike. I had to do what I had to do. And we worked a lot on striking in this camp. You rocked him very, uh, I think it was the end of the first round. You rocked him heavily. Did you feel like from there, did that give you a little bit more confidence in your striking? Yeah, of course. Uh, I know like in, in this camp, I was rocking some of my sparring partners. So I knew with MMA gloves, mm -hmm. I can knock out. But in the first round, I threw a low kick. He checked it. I don't know what happened to my foot. It slowed everything from the second round and third round. I didn't fight the way I was supposed to fight. Well, your nickname is obviously the Pride of Bahrain. How much does it mean to you to get this big win in Bahrain and, and do it for the people of Bahrain, who I'm sure are watching right now and supporting you? Do you have a message for all of those people watching you? Of course, man. My, my, per, uh, my career is the most important thing in my life after my religion and family and friends. My country, of course. It comes very important, so I take it very serious. So it's an honor for me to be the pride of Bahrain. It's an honor for me to represent my people in the fight game. I'm really happy. And finally, I want to ask you, this is your, your fourth win in a row, your eighth performance inside the Brave Arena. How far away do you think you are from knocking on the door of a title shot? Well, I've been knocking on that door for a long time. And I don't know. So I need to go back. I need to watch the fight first. I need to know if... I deserve a title fight because I don't feel like I fought the way I'm supposed to fight. And then we'll see from then on. Well, you should be very, I'm very proud with your performance. We've thoroughly enjoyed it in commentary. And one last time, congratulations. We hope to see you soon, Hamza. Thank you. I would like also to thank my opponent, Aidan James. He gave me a good fight. He's a tough guy. He had a second loss now. I hope like this makes him stronger and we see him back soon with a bet becoming a better and stronger fighter. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Bahrain himself, Hamza Kouedji. Thank you. TCF returns for an epic night of fights as the fastest growing promotion in MMA closes out the latest Combat Kingdom series in epic style. At Brave CF65, the pride of Bahrain, Hamza Kaheji, gets back to action as he takes on Colombian MMA icon Eduardo Mora in the main event. Also set for fight night is the much anticipated return of Jose Shorty Torres, as the number five flyweight in the world goes up in weight to welcome Arab superstar Izzedine Al Durbani. Tune in to witness the best athletes from around the world in epic battles and electrifying action. Brave CF65, live from the Khalifa Sports City Arena in the Kingdom of Bahrain.